there. And uh, before I turn it over to Jaime, uh, I had a couple of uh, a couple little thoughts. Uh, um, Jaime, I think Jaime and I have known each other for 40 years. I think we must have met in 82, if not soon thereafter. Um, I was thinking about him and we're still very good friends. Um, and we've been kind of better friends the last few years. Um, when I think about Jaime, I think about someone who's humble, who's of faith and who does amazing service. Um, as if you read the, the blurb, he was, he was a professor at the uh, Cornell uh, in radiation oncology until 98. And then he uh, decided to go home, go to Puerto Rico and and take care of his people, really. Um, and if you know anything about Puerto Rico, I only know what time he's told me, um, what I've read, but um, you know, it's a difficult situation in terms of the government um, infrastructure, electricity in particular, um, uh, talent flight, and then hurricanes on top of all that. Um, and uh, so one of the things I just wanted to kind of, one, one little story is that, uh, you know, most of the time these days I'm uh, working with men trying to, uh, men who have all kinds of problems who I'm trying to help. And uh, I mean, he started talking to me about that and he wanted their names because he wanted to be praying for them. And he wasn't screwing around either because he wanted updates as we went through time. And he would be asking about the same person that I had mentioned six months ago and, uh, and by name saying, you know, how's, how's Harry? How's Harry's baby who was sick? Um, so he was very serious about that, and uh, I found that you know extremely touching. So with that as intro, uh, Jaime, it's to you, and uh, you have the ball up till eight thirty if you want. If you want to stop before that, you can. Um, and really, you can talk about whatever you want. So over to you, Jaime. You need to uh, unmute. Okay. So uh, thanks, Sam, and thanks for inviting me. Uh, it really is an honor that you know to be here, and I've enjoyed these meetings that I've attended very, very much. And so I'm, it's really it feels something special to be now one of the speakers. Uh, it's been such a the, the bar has been set pretty high by everybody who's been before me, so I'll, I'll do my best. So anyway, like Tom said, uh, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Uh, we met at Wesleyan, uh, and after that, I went back to Puerto Rico. Uh, for medical school, I uh, did my residency at Johns Hopkins, uh, did a professorship at Cornell for three years, and then I've been back in Puerto Rico since 1998. Growing up here, I went to a Catholic school, uh, and uh, it was an uh, interesting Catholic school with a very old school masculinity. Uh, and uh, the one thing that I, I that has been a real gift of that experience was our loyalty, my, my group of friends from here, we, we remain friends uh, to this day. Now, the, the abuse crisis that plagued so many, uh, the, the Catholic Church in so many places, seems to have skipped Puerto Rico. There have been hardly any scandals about that. So uh, scan, a scandal that would have driven many people away from the church. Well, most of my friends remain in the Catholic Church. Um, so it's been an overwhelmingly favorable experience for me, uh, my experience in the Catholic Church. Now, with that, having said that, one of my favorite quotes uh, is from St. Augustine, says, which uh, in English, I guess, would translate, uh, if you could understand him, he wouldn't be God. Okay, so I'm, I mean to say that because um, during this talk, I will be using words like God, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, Christ, but I'm clear as St. Augustine says, the human mind and human words are completely insufficient to understand and express and transmit everything that the higher power entails. So, but I will have to use those words because those are the words that I know. Um, so, so now let's start talking about my experience as an oncologist. I'm a radiation oncologist. I treat cancer with radiation, be that with X-ray machines or with uh, radioactive isotopes. Uh, I often get asked uh, if it's depressing to treat uh, cancer, if it's, uh, well, you know, how do I deal with this emotional strain? Um, 
Now, first and foremost, I mean, if you're going to go into medicine, you know you're going to be among sick people. So that, that part, I mean, that you, you, you start with a baseline expectation that you're, that you're going to be, uh, that there's going to be an emotional uh, burden that you have to wear, you have to bear. Now, fortunately in oncology, we have, we have been making great strides. Uh, most of my patients will survive. Okay, so that, that, uh, that, that is uh, reaffirming. I mean, you definitely feel that you're doing some good. But then you also learn to measure success with uh, different yardsticks, okay? Uh, uh, and uh, it, it, sometimes I feel prouder or, or sometimes patients' families are more grateful of the fact that uh, radiation happens to be very effective at healing cancer pain. So you can have a person that's miserable with pain and you give them radiation uh, and the pain goes away and they live out their last days pain-free. And the families are just so, so grateful about that. And uh, so that may not sound like much of a, of a victory, but man, I, I latch on to that. Uh, another patient who, he wanted to live long enough to make it to his daughter's wedding. And, you know, we were, able to achieve that and and uh, and to this day uh, his family is extremely grateful about that and uh, and uh, so you you again may not sound like much of it but let me tell you it, it, it when you when you're on the end of having of receiving that gratitude it it is it is huge um so and uh, I'm so I'm also an optimist. I mean, every, every you know, uh, medicine is all probability. It's a uh, responses to cancer a spectrum, and even in the most dire cases, you will have an exceptional patient that will respond better uh, the, than the rest of the patients. So I I assume the first the person that first walks my door, I assume this person will be an exceptional patient and will respond well and will and will do well. And uh, and uh, so that that that's just how I approach every person that comes to my office. Uh, and uh, I, I've had a, one patient whose cure I cannot. I mean, he was healed of a metastatic cancer by means that cannot be medically explained. So I, I've had that experience personally. Um, and uh, so and. I mean, this 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 person was also a very deep faith, so I I gotta assume something supernatural happened there. Uh, and finally, I mean, and getting emotionally attached to my patients, I I it's just something that 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 uh, I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. That that's not something that should even be a, a question. I feel that that's that's how you practice medicine. So. But like I said, it, it's you know being an oncologist is, is overall an extremely rewarding experience, and the the when the emotional strain uh, that may go with it, it's not it's not really it's not really that much of an issue. Now, if you saw my photo uh, that Tom posted in the Facebook uh, page, uh, the um, you have seen my white coat uh, is loaded with uh, with pins. Uh, now, unfortunately, I've had to take them down because of the uh, pandemic. OSHA uh, said that it was a, a source of, could be a source of COVID transmission. So right now I'm not wearing them. I'm, 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 someday I might just say, you know, to hell with OSHA and start putting them back on. But anyway, these, these pins were, were um, whatever the patients would, give, would want to give me, uh, I would put on. I, I've been doing uh, my first pin I got from my Mrs. McDermott in Philadelphia. So I've been collecting patient pins uh, for 30 years now. Um, and um, a lot of, some, of my, some of the ones that I feel most proud about are, the, uh, are from veterans. Uh, some um, veteran gave me his uh, CIB. Uh, another uh, gave me his Purple Heart. I mean, it's, 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 that's huge. And I, I, I was worried. I, I, I asked my military friends, I mean, can I wear this? I mean, I mean if, I, if the person if the person gifted it to you, yes, definitely. Uh, so those, those so those, all, all these things that the patients give me uh, have uh, uh, a special meaning, both to the patient and to me. But the overwhelming uh, majority of these things are really just medals, okay. Uh, 
you know, Puerto Rico is a country where the vast majority of the people are religious. And one thing that and for, for me is, is, you know, being spiritual, I'm, it's just in the, in the milieu. Uh, my patients remind me every day, they tell me, you are God's instrument. They're constantly reminding that physicians are God's instrument for healing. Uh, so, and I take that very much to, to, to heart, however worse, unworthy an instrument I may be. Um, but the, um, uh, having said that, I, I also, I'm, I'm, I'm very clear about keeping medicine and healing separate. I mean, I, I, will, I will never let someone's faith or my, my faith influence whatever medically uh, acceptable guideline applies to that particular patient. Um, so now the, the, the uh, I miss those medals terribly now that I'm not wearing them uh, during the pandemic because they, uh, uh, <laughs> you can probably tell by now, I'm not, I'm not very good at speaking with words. And th that, those medals were really critical for me to, they were priceless for me to transmit my faith to patients. Uh, so, so that's why I'm saying someday I might just say to her with OSHA and instead <laughs> put them back on. Maybe, uh, I shouldn't say that if we're going to be recorded. Just kidding. Anyway, but uh, so like I said, in, in, in Puerto Rico, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a very religious uh, society and uh, it, it shows in, the, in how the patients approach uh, in their disease. But even in medical school, in medical school uh, I, there's two uh, particular pearls that two of my professors imparted on me when I was a medical student, uh, and these are these are professors of medicine, and uh, one of them told me, "Every sick person in front of you bears Christ's suffering. You you are privileged. You're going to have Christ coming to you every day," and that 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 just blew me away then and blows my mind today. Uh, so another one told me, I mean. It's, Cancer can be a very stressful situation, and especially when you when you have a, a very very uh, oncologists in Puerto Rico are very very busy. There's certainly not enough of us, and and, and we certainly overwork, and patients uh, get get stressed, and uh, sometimes patients or their family members can get very difficult, very nasty, and when you're tired, it's very easy to get nasty back. And this professor told me. Whenever you're in that situation, just take a deep breath and say in your head, say to the patient in your head, I greet your inner Christ. And I, I do that and it, it's like magic. It, it completely changes my, my, uh, my attitude to the patient. And, and, and it just diffuses the whole thing. Now, the, um, the cancer patients, I've, for the most part, the cancer patients that I've come across are patients that, even when they succumb to their disease, they 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 have been real examples that, in terms of being able to uh, live out their days with dignity. And it's it's it's, it's uh, in that sense I've, I've been pretty fortunate. But I've had some absolutely exceptional patients patients and in. Uh, in uh, if uh, again, I, these these were people that were touched by the Holy Spirit, and by and there's there's things that are difficult to put in words. How when you uh, one of them that comes to my mind right now, this person had a tumor that was eroding his base of skull. I mean, if you can if you can imagine behind your 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 uh, your palate behind your nose all the way to where your your skull sits on the vertebrae, he had a tumor that was just eating through that and it was, he was losing vision. He was in the most horrible pain. You could see that he was in pain. But even when you could see that he was in pain, this man just transmitted uh, good vibes, I guess you could call it. I mean, and this, this person was always asking on my son and he kept bringing, uh, uh, oh, and this guy was a biker. <laughs> this guy, I mean, you can picture a, 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 a a biker with a bandana and the and the and the uh, unkempt beer and tattoos from his fingers to his shoulder. Uh, uh, it so it, 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 this last person that you think 
<laughs> if, if you go by, by, by external appearances, you'll be the last person to think this person is transmitting the Holy Spirit, but this, this man was completely. Um, uh, there's uh, uh, another patient that, uh, that, that this guy had a, a very advanced lymphoma. I had treated him several times. We had developed a great relation. And this, this man, like I said, here's another person who just carried the, whole, the Holy Spirit with him. This person, just by being within the room, everyone in the room just was made a better person just by this guy being in the room. And I still remember the last conversation I had with him uh, when I told him that really I had, I had reached the end of my uh, capabilities as a physician. Nothing I could do would help him. And, uh, and I still just remember the, the, the man was just emanating light as we were having this, con this conversation. Uh, so I, my, spiritual, my spirituality is not so much personal for me, it's my patients. My patients impart me my spirituality. Yeah, the, I've been, my patients do a lot more for me than I do for them. Uh, besides my patients, I mean, my, my faith has been um, strengthened by people that God has put in my path. Uh, which, you know, again, if, 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 uh, if uh, we're all created in God's image and likeness, I mean, only seems fitting that God will put people on your path, you know, to strengthen your faith. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be clouds and, 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 and bursts of light and like that. I mean, uh, most immediately, my wife, Clary, is, is a person that, that is a pillar to my faith. Uh, my faith tends to be too intellectual. I, I love dwelling into church history. I love uh, uh, reading about how the gospels were written and how it was decided upon, which were the, tr the real gospels, the different dogmas that was determined by church councils. I, fi I find that fascinating. Uh, but my wife, who's, who's a pediatric dentist, and she's no less accomplished professionally than I, she's the one that always focuses me back to what's important in terms of what all those dogma means. How, how is that applied? How do you live those dogmas? And she and I uh, had absolutely nothing in common prior to our meeting and prior to starting the day. I mean, really, really nothing in common. Uh, no, no people in common. We live in completely different of town. And that she, that she and I are together, I, I consider that proof of God's existence. I mean, there's no rational reason why the two of us should uh, be together. Uh, another person that I that has been uh, a pillar to my faith was uh, uh, about 25 years ago. I did a retreat uh, that in Spanish would be would, uh, would translate into English like a short course on Christianity. Um, the spiritual director of this course was uh, a totally extraordinary man. Um, he was Cuban. He had been a physician in Cuba and Cuba. Uh, he, um, it, when during the after the Cuban Revolution, he got his family out of Cuba and he stayed uh, in Cuba to be um, one of the resistance against Castro. Uh, he was uh, he was jailed. Uh, he escaped jail. He managed to get smuggled out of Cuba and made it to Puerto Rico and joined his family. He remained practicing as an as a, as a, a ENT. Uh, he had three children. Uh, one of them was very close to one of my sisters. Uh, he died. Be, uh, he was just a very avid uh, cyclist, and he he died in a cycling accident. A uh, uh, car hit him. Um, his all, one of his daughters uh, died of cancer, very also in like her twenties. And then his wife, uh, when he was in like his fifties. His, uh, his wife died also of cancer. So this man, who do you think had every reason to be angry with God after such a hard life, after having lost three of his most dearest people, well, sort of his most dear people, he became a Catholic priest. And, and this man was amazing. Again, this, this man, you could just feel the Holy Spirit emanating from this man. And I, wanted, I was I was blessed to have taken this course with him. That how he he just I I 
I have suffered very little trauma in my life. My life, my faith has not been tested the way this man was. And I, I pray that I could, uh, I mean, he gave me a, a lesson. He gave us all a lesson on, on how you just, you know, find strength and realize what is not God's fault. What is, what, you know, not, you just, you just keep moving with your life and, 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 and loving God for what he has given you. And finally, I, um, like you, Tom, I was, um, I was uh, blessed with uh, an extraordinary father. Um, a, my, my father uh, was born in Spain. Uh, he, um, his father in the Spanish Civil War, his father was a red. Not really a red in that he was in a communist. He, 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 was, he was a practicing Catholic, uh, but he was anti-fascist. He, and he... And he fought for the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War. Uh, so the Spanish Civil War lasted three years uh, when uh, my grandfather, at the end of the war, he had fled to France and he was interned. If you read about the history of this, it's pretty, pretty sad how the French treated the Spanish, Republican, the Spanish Republicans that sought asylum in, in, uh, in uh, France. They treated him, treated them like criminals. Uh, so he was there for a year. He took his chances <laughs> and returned to Spain, hoping that because he had two brothers in Franco's army, that they wouldn't shoot him. And that's how it turned out. They, 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 they did not shoot him, they, which was probably what happened to anyone else who tried, any Republican who tried to return to Franco Spain. That's what they would have done to them. So in terms, in terms they, just gave, they, just gave them, uh, they just gave them eight years of hard labor and, and a quarry. But the, being a Republican, uh, being a red in Franco Spain meant that you had, that they were destitute. They were, they were everything that they owned was confiscated. Uh, so they, they, were, they, were, they were in really, really hard times. My father uh, was uh, a gifted student. Uh, he always managed to score highs in all the tests that he took. He managed to get scholarships to private schools in uh, the part of, in San Sebastian where he lived. And he, because he, he was always at the top of his class, he just kept getting scholarships and, uh, and eventually graduated from medicine and uh, he uh, in Spain. And then he, because he got tired of, of all the obstacles that you have to overcome being the son of a red. And he was, off, he was offered a chance to come to Puerto Rico and he came to Puerto Rico and here he met my mother. Now, Again, my father, uh, who you'd think would have every reason to be angry with God and, and life in general, was, again, a person who just transmitted the Holy Spirit and made everyone around them happy, better. And he didn't have to say, he just had to be there. It's, it's just vibes. It's just an energy that they, that they transmit. But my father was very much, I mean, this is not like, um, a, <clears throat> I don't know. He wasn't like the force or anything. I mean, my father was very, very much a practicing Catholic, and and he he uh, he nourished his his all this positive energy through his through his Catholic faith. But I, again, my my but my father was something beyond. My father could take you could. I I saw this in my eyes. A person dying. I mean, I'm, I'm not dying, but a, a terminally ill patient on a stretcher. My father would tell that person, you're going to see Jesus. I know if I say it, it probably wouldn't have any effect. When my father said it, you could see this person transform, light up. You know, it, it, my, my father really was a vessel for, for, for the Holy Spirit. And probably he has been, first of all, and not, not only that, I mean, I mean he, was, he was a great physician. He's the model of a physician that, that I want to be. He's still the most intelligent man I have met. Uh, and so that is probably, if anybody has shaped my faith more, uh, more than my patients, it, it has to be my father. So, the, so the, the, the underlying theme tying all these experiences that, I, that I've been blessed uh, with is that um, go, you could sum it up in a, in a quote from St. Francis of Assisi, uh, said that people are God's providence. And uh, uh, so and I was, there was also when I was in, in school in Puerto Rico, I remember the, there was one of the Baltimore's had this, this poster. 
if you want to get closer to God, get closer to people. Uh, so, so the thing is to keep your eyes open for those people God puts in your path. Uh, uh, last week during Kevin O'Hare's uh, uh, talk, he had this experience of somebody, the, the driver of the car, I don't know if Kevin is here listening, but, but, but he's one of, and, and I'm sure he recognizes it, he, 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 that God put this person in, that, in his path at that time specifically. So we, we have to keep our eyes to, to those people that God puts in, 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 in our path. And, and we must also have the humility to recognize, you know, hey, we, we are going to be God's providence at some point. God, God, uh, God's going to use us to help someone to, uh, to, to be his providence. And we just have to make sure that we, we recognize that and, and, and we just let go and, 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 and get carried away with, with God's plan. I, I am certain uh, uh, this group has been part of God's providence for me. Uh, so, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's, I, I think I'm done with what I'm, uh, the topic. Uh, I would like to close with a prayer. Uh, one of let's, do the, let's do the prayer at the end of the whole meeting. Is that okay? Oh. Yeah. Oh, sure. Whatever you say, Tom. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do the sharing, and then you'll close the whole thing with a prayer. Okay. So that was awesome, man. Thank you so much. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna turn the.